This programme can only form part of the training which is legally required for people working with these machines. Portable cutting off machines and angle grinders are abrasive wheel machines. The work they can be used for depends on the type of machine and the abrasive wheel that's mounted on it. Different combinations will cut or grind anything from plastic to steel. Many abrasive wheels are available, but only some are designed for use with portable machines. And only a few of those will suit a particular machine. There are cutting off wheels, grinding wheels, and different wheels for different materials. Because abrasive wheel machines can be dangerous, legislation and standards have been introduced to help reduce the number of accidents. It's a criminal offence for firms or individuals using abrasive wheel machines in their work to be unaware of or not to implement regulations relating to these machines. Under the provision and use of work equipment regulations, proper training in the safe use and mounting of abrasive wheels is not an option. It's a legal requirement. A record should be kept showing the date and details of the training and the trainee's name. Remember, if you mount an abrasive wheel incorrectly, you are responsible for any accidents caused by that incorrect mounting. Because the wheels revolve at very high speeds, skin contact can be devastating. To give you some idea of what can happen, this is the effect on a leg of lamb. Doing that amount of damage took less than a quarter of a second. Even during normal working, particles thrown out from the abrasive wheel or the workpiece can damage your eyes. One of the basic legal requirements is that employers must provide and employees must use suitable eye protection. Particles thrown out in this type of work often travel at around 80 meters per second which is 180 miles per hour. To cope with the impacts, all eye protection must comply with BSEN 166 Grade B. To limit the damage from particles thrown out from the abrasive wheel or workpiece, there is a legal requirement for all abrasive wheel machines to be fitted with suitable guards which must be properly adjusted and maintained. Machines with defective guards must be taken out of service and reported. Many types of dust are dangerous to breathe. Using the right dust mask or respirator will help to prevent respiratory problems or cancer. This helmet combines ear and eye protection with a positive pressure respirator. Where possible, control the dust at source. A grinding booth can stop particles from getting into the working atmosphere. Extractor fans remove the dusty air, which is then cleaned with water. Special precautions need to be taken when grinding magnesium alloys, because the dust produced can ignite on clothing or explode when mixed with air. Many cutting off machines are fitted with spray nozzles, which, when connected to a water supply, help to suppress the dust produced by cutting materials such as stone, brickwork or concrete. It's important that both sides of the wheel are damped, otherwise the temperature difference between them will put extra stress on the wheel. The water supply can be from the mains or portable, like this one. This block is being cut without dust suppression. The same operation looks quite different with the spray attachment working. Even when the dust is suppressed, it's often necessary to wear a dust mask. Follow the wheel manufacturer's instructions when wet cutting. Never use water on a wheel with this symbol. It means it's not suitable for wet grinding. 
Abrasive wheel machines should never be used near flammable materials or gases. The heat and sparks produced can easily cause a fire. A simple shield like this can be useful in limiting the travel of sparks and small particles. Remember that clothes containing polyester can melt and burn you. Depending on the situation, wear 100% cotton or flame retardant overalls combined with helmets and safety footwear. For some work, greater spark protection such as a leather apron will be necessary. Keep clothing free from oil, fuel or other flammable substances. High noise levels are also a serious problem with these machines. Hearing can be permanently damaged. The noise at work regulations state when hearing protection is required by law, but it makes sense to wear suitable ear defenders as a matter of course. They should always be worn when cutting or grinding metal or when working inside a building. Various ear defenders are available. Different types have different protection ratings. Make sure the ones you use offer enough protection for the work you're doing. Remember that anyone working nearby will need personal protective equipment. Where there are unprotected people, for example in a public area, make sure that all passers-by are shielded from particles and excessive noise. As well as eye protection, ear defenders and dust mask, anyone working with an abrasive wheel usually needs gloves, safety boots and a helmet. Keep long hair out of the way and avoid loose clothing, including ties or scarves. Remember that under the Health and Safety at Work Act, you must take good care of yourself. That includes wearing the right clothing for the job. People using tools like cutting off machines and angle grinders can develop hand-arm vibration syndrome, which is caused by overexposure to vibration. HAVS affects blood circulation, nerves, muscles, joints and bones and can cause permanent painful disability. The risk of injury depends on a range of factors including the level of vibration, the degree and pattern of exposure, the way the machine is used and the working condition. Vibration measurement at the grinding process, as part of the risk assessment, can help to establish safe exposure times for shift and other workers. Although vibration is inherent in the cutting and grinding process, damage can be minimised. Proper training helps you to use the machine safely and efficiently, reducing vibration and the time it takes to do the job. Proper maintenance is essential. Even a machine with a low rating can produce dangerous vibration levels if incorrectly used or maintained. Let the machine do the work, don't force it. Avoid using the equipment continuously for long periods. Short bursts are better. Good blood circulation is very important. This grip is too tight and reducing circulation. As the hand is relaxed a little, you can see the blood returning to it. Don't smoke. Smoking, like cold temperatures, reduces blood flow. Keep your hands and body warm and improve blood flow by exercising your hands and fingers. Symptoms of HAVS occur gradually and get worse in cold conditions. First signs are often tingling, pins and needles or numbness in the fingers, followed by a whitening of the fingertips which then spreads. This can lead to permanent loss of grip, flexibility and feeling in the hands and cause pain and stiffness in hand and arm joints. Don't ignore these symptoms, seek medical advice. Abrasive wheels can burst. This happens when the wheel shatters, throwing sharp pieces in all directions. The pieces can cause severe and sometimes fatal injuries. One cause of bursting is over-speeding, that's running a wheel too fast. 
A rotating wheel is under stress. As the speed of the wheel increases, the strength required to hold it together also increases, dramatically. For example, increasing the RPM from 5,000 to 7,000 doubles the tension in the wheel. By 10,000 RPM, it is four times as much. By law, each abrasive wheel must be marked with its maximum permissible operating speed in RPM. Abrasive wheels are made to be strong enough for normal use up to their maximum permissible speed. If a wheel is run faster than this, the increase in tension can cause it to burst. Knowing the permissible speed of an abrasive wheel is not much use unless you know how fast the machine will drive it. So by law, each machine must be marked with its spindle speed. The spindle speed must never exceed the speed marked on the abrasive wheel. Uneven or extreme work pressure will also cause a wheel to burst. Never use the side of a cutting off wheel for grinding and always use the right wheel for the material. Don't bump the wheel against the workpiece or change direction during a cut. It's important to keep the wheel straight. Re-entering a cut can break the wheel, so try to avoid it. If it has to be done, take great care. Many wheel breakages occur because the workpiece is insecure. Always make sure that the work can't move. Pressing too hard or leaving the wheel in one position in the workpiece can overheat part of the wheel and create enough stress to break it. Where possible, move it backwards and forwards along the cut to prevent localised overheating. Don't force the cut. Let the wheel do the work. Jamming or trapping a wheel in a cut can destroy it and seriously injure the operator. Never cut like this. As the cut is made, the workpiece sags. Then it grips and shatters the wheel. Always make sure that the offcut falls away from the wheel. So wheels can burst because of overspeeding or uneven or extreme work pressure. Incorrect mounting or using damaged or faulty wheels can have the same result. To minimise the risks from wheel bursting, abrasive wheels for use on these portable machines are resin bonded and reinforced. This is shown on the label by the letters BF and is sometimes printed in full. The reinforcement is provided by glass fibre mats put into the wheel during manufacture. If the wheel breaks, the mats help to hold the pieces together. Portable abrasive wheel machines can be driven by petrol, electricity or compressed air. All new machines should carry this mark. Machine design is improving, increasing efficiency and reducing vibration levels. This pneumatic machine is very powerful for its size and has an auto-balancing hub. The anti-vibration system on this petrol-driven machine reduces the transmission of vibration to the operator's hands. By law, all machines must be fitted with an on-off switch. Never override it. Petrol-driven machines are highly portable and powerful. They're designed for cutting off wheels only. The carbon monoxide gas in the exhaust fumes is dangerous so only use petrol machines where there's good ventilation. Remember that a dust mask gives no protection against carbon monoxide. Fuel can also be a danger, so be careful. Store it properly and follow the manufacturer's advice about refueling. To reduce the risk from shock, use only 110 volt electric machines. If a 230 volt supply has to be used, then this should be protected by a residual current device. Always check that the machine is switched off before connecting power. Make sure that the cable is long enough to reach the work area comfortably and never suspend the machine by the cable. 
Compressed air machines offer limited portability but are very powerful. They are often suited to factories or foundries and can be particularly useful in situations such as tunnelling or sewer work, where limited ventilation makes petrol machines dangerous and the wet conditions are electrically hazardous. The air supply must be clean and water free. This unit filters and lubricates the air before it reaches the grinder. Both pressure and volume of air delivered to the tool must be right, so the hose and all fittings need to have the correct bore. With any grinding machine, too much or too little power can be dangerous. Too much and the wheel will overspeed and burst. Too little and the operator may press harder against the workpiece and break the wheel. Make sure that the machine is turned off before connection and never suspended by the air hose. Cold air can contribute to HAVS, so particular attention needs to be paid to keeping hands warm. Some machines have insulating sleeves on the handles, but gloves should be worn as a matter of course. Even when the air supply has been turned off, the air hose to the machine may still be under pressure. After use or before disconnecting the hose, run the air out of the machine to reduce the pressure. Don't use any machine which is not in good mechanical condition. Regular and frequent maintenance is essential. As part of the maintenance schedule, the accuracy of the spindle speed should be measured using a tachometer. The machine under test is rated at 5100 RPM maximum spindle speed, so it's operating just on the safe side of that. Although some cut concrete and others will cut steel, all abrasive wheels are fragile. Never drop, knock, roll or tread on an abrasive wheel. Dropping an abrasive wheel machine can seriously damage the mounted wheel or bend the spindle. If you drop a machine, disconnect the power, check the machine very carefully and have a new wheel fitted. Before storing or using a wheel, check for any physical damage such as distortion or warping and look for marks left by water, oil, petrol or diesel because contact with these can weaken a wheel, making it dangerous to use. Any wheels like this or this should be destroyed. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations regarding the best method of storing any particular type of wheel. Often the best and simplest method is to store them in their original packaging on a flat, rigid surface. Resin bonded wheels for use on portable machines should be marked with an expiry date of three years from manufacture. The expiry date on this wheel is April 2003. Always keep abrasive wheels dry, avoid extreme temperatures and never store them under other materials. Remove abrasive wheels after use and store the machines in cases or on racks. Abrasive wheels are known by type numbers. The three most commonly used on these machines are Type 41, flat cutting off wheels, Type 42, depressed centre cutting off wheels, and Type 27, depressed centre grinding wheels. These diagrams show the grinding face of each type. Only use the edges of cutting off wheels, never grind on the sides because they're not designed for it and can break. Some machines take flat or depressed centre wheels, others take only one type. Make sure that the shape suits the work and the machine. Mounting the wrong wheel for the job 
or for the machine is dangerous. If you're cutting, use a flat or depressed centre cutting off wheel. That's a type 41 or a type 42 wheel. If grinding, use only a type 27 depressed centre grinding wheel. Cutting off wheels should have this marking, meaning the wheel is not to be used for face grinding. Wheels with this symbol are not permitted for use on handheld machines. Make sure that the wheels you choose have this mark. It's the European standard for good quality wheels in this class. The marking system gives other important and useful information to help you choose the right wheel. As well as the type number, the dimensions must also be correct. This label shows the diameter of the wheel, the thickness of the wheel, and the diameter of the spindle hole. The right diameter should be marked on the wheel and on the machine. Never fit an oversize wheel. The spindle hole diameter also needs to be exactly right for the machine, so that the wheel is free to rotate on the spindle but is not loose. To cut or grind the workpiece effectively, the wheel must also have the right composition. This marking shows the abrasive, the grain size, the grade and the bond type. The abrasive used in the wheel is usually given by the letters A or C. A is for aluminium oxide, suitable for work on ferrous metals. C for silicon carbide, for stone, brickwork, concrete, plastics or non-ferrous metals. Aluminium oxide wheels are usually marked metal. Silicon carbide wheels are usually marked stone. As a general rule, use silicon carbide or stone wheels to cut mixed materials, such as reinforced concrete or concrete lined pipes. The grain size tells you if the wheel will produce a coarse or a finer finish. In practice, it's often 24, 30 or 36. A lower number indicates a coarse finish but a quicker cut. The grade is shown by letters of the alphabet and tells you if the wheel is designed to cut hard or soft materials most efficiently. In practice, the letter shown will often be somewhere between P and T. Grade P is a softer grade for use on harder materials and grade T is a harder grade for use on softer materials. Grade R is often suitable for general use. The bond is the base material of the wheel which binds the abrasive particles together safely. All flat and depressed centre abrasive wheels for use on portable machines must be resin bonded and reinforced. This is usually shown by the letters BF, but it's sometimes printed in full. Some wheels are also marked with the type of material they're designed to be used on. Aluminium tends to clog or load standard wheels, so special wheels are produced for it. One of the most important bits of information on a wheel is the maximum safe operating speed. This is marked in revolutions per minute RPM, and in meters per second. A red stripe across the label indicates 80 meters per second. That means that the periphery or edge of the wheel must not travel faster than 80 meters per second. Before you use a wheel, you must always check the spindle speed against the speed marked on the wheel. Remember that the spindle speed must never be faster than the speed marked on the wheel. It should always be possible to clearly identify a wheel. If it isn't, there's one simple rule you can rely on. If you can't identify a wheel, don't use it. Methods of mounting abrasive wheels vary from machine to machine, 
so follow the manufacturer's instructions. These basic guidelines can be used every time you mount a wheel. Always disconnect the power. Stop the petrol engines. Switch off and unplug the electricity supply. Or disconnect the compressed air hose. Use the correct tools for the job. If you don't, you can easily damage the flanges. Clean the flanges and check them for damage. Check the abrasive wheel for damage. Check that the wheel is suitable for the job. Does it have the right composition? And is it the right type? Wheels marked like this are not suitable for handheld machines. If you're wet grinding, the wheel must not have this symbol. Check that the dimensions of the wheel suit the machine. It must have the correct diameter and the spindle hole diameter needs to be exactly right. Check the spindle speed and the speed marked on the wheel. Remember, the spindle speed must never exceed the speed marked on the wheel. Never mount more than one wheel on a spindle. Although the method of mounting varies with the machine and abrasive wheel, there are some basic principles which can be demonstrated using these two types of machine. Taking the petrol driven one. To change a wheel, use the locking pin to keep the spindle steady. Some machines have a locking button or need a spanner to do this. Then undo the nut and remove the wheel. The flanges need to be in good condition, clean and free of burrs, so they grip the wheel with a balanced, even pressure. Never use flanges of different sizes. They should be in matched pairs and be the right type for the machine. Dirty threads can be dangerous.